Well, let me tell you this. There's something amazing within. Wait a minute. Amazing within? And you may go, well, what are you talking about? Something amazing within, within me? Oh, yes. When we look at Scripture, we find this wonderful truth that says from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Spirit dwells in you, resides in you, is in you. There's something amazing in you, and that is this wonderful Spirit and presence of God. It's deep within you. It is that which you are created from, created in the image and likeness of the divine. And that power, that presence, that wonderful intelligence is there present within you. There's something amazing within you. So say it with me. The Spirit of God is in me. The Spirit of God is in me. Say it with me again. The Spirit of God is in me. How important it is that we begin to acknowledge that. That's the step of one of our great success in life is we begin to acknowledge something amazing is within and that divine presence is there. Spirit of God dwells within me, offering me all the intelligence of God, the wisdom of God, the very mind of God. It's there within my very being, within my very essence. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21 says, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, look here or look there, for indeed, yes, 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 the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. It's within. Now, I've had some discussions with people of different traditions of Christianity and say, oh, no, 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 no. That, that's not what they're saying when Jesus said it's within. Oh, that's not what they're saying when they're saying indeed. No, no, that's not what they're saying when it says dwells in you. It really means maybe he dwells among you, you know, outside of you, that the presence of God is felt outside, but it's not within and so constantly they're saying, you know, there's so many bad people in this world. The presence of God can't be in them. There's so many people who are doing things that are evil and walking in error thinking that the presence of God can't be in them. It's got to be that that translation really meant among you. Because so many people are looking at life from seeing us created in a sinful nature. That when you were born, you came out of the womb and your first breath was, you're a sinner. Oh, how... Uh, People have embraced this kind of thinking that we are just born into a sinful nature rather than acknowledging, as the Scripture teaches us, that we're created in the image and likeness of God. That's in us. It's within us. It dwells in us. You are the temple, the dwelling place of this divine presence. It's already within you. You're made in that image, and that likeness, that revelation of the divine is what's in you. It's amazing. It's amazing. You realize that that power and presence is there for you to have access to at any time within the course of your day? That's right. And it's wanting and waiting to emerge. That's right. It's wanting and waiting to come out. That wonderful divine presence wants to emerge from within you. It wants to be released. It wants to be revealed. It wants to be expressed. We can look at every, every different word or term that might uh, uh, help us understand the wonderful power that wants to flow out of our lives. Well, what is wanting to emerge from you is this divine good, the goodness that you're created in, the very image of God that you are as you move and breathe and have your being in this world, as Scripture says. You know, we find within the word of God that God is described as this fountain of good. The psalmist has written in chapter 36, 9, for with you is the fountain of life, that very life, the very abundant life that is spoken of within the scriptures. It's within you. It's like a fountain. This presence is this fountain that's ever bubbling, ever rising up within us. You know, a fountain well, it's got to have a source of water, right? So, you know, uh, I have a fountain outside my office, and the source of water is me when I come by with a pitcher and fill it all up, and it recycles through, and the tank then becomes a source full of water, and it just recycles it through. makes this wonderful, comforting sound and the energy of movement of water. It's beautiful and very relaxing. So it is true that we think about the fountain within our life. There is a divine source. That source is God. 
That source is deep within us. And that source is bubbling up. It is recycling, shall we say, over and over again. The goodness of God is flowing in your life. And you can't exhaust that goodness or use it up or come to an end of that goodness. That's the beautiful thing. It keeps flowing. It's a divine flow within us. So some people say, well, you know what? I feel like I only have so much love to give. I only have so much patience to offer. I only have so much grace to share. And I have trouble with forgiveness. There's only so much I can do. Oh, when we realize the divine presence of God is there, that presence of good, it's ever recycling. It's ever flowing. There's an infinite supply. There's enough grace. There's enough passion. There's enough forgiveness. There's enough uh, love. There's enough of anything that you may need or desire to express within you. It comes from that source. It is an endless source, a source of infinite possibilities within your life. The divine source is the good flowing out. And so much of our lives is that we haven't really focused on what's waiting to be released. That's right. Did you ever think about how much goodness is in you waiting to be released, waiting to be expressed, waiting to be offered? How much patience, love is waiting waiting. Let me be expressed to infinite possibilities. Let me really flow out of your life. Let it be this abundance that's within me. Let it just emerge from within me. It's waiting to be released in powerful ways. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for God's goodness and for his wonderful works. He satisfies the longing soul and fills fills, fills the hungry soul with goodness. That's right. That's that fountain. Filling the hungry soul with goodness, recycling it over, bubbling it over from the source. It comes in, it flows around, it cycles through in the fountain. It just is expressed over and over again. That good, which is God rising up within you is bubbling up and ready to satisfy and to fill your life. That's right. Ready to satisfy. Ready to fill you up, fill you up with the goodness. And how important it is that we understand that this goodness is filled up to the brim. How many of you remember Psalm 23? And there's a beautiful verse in the 23rd Psalm, verse 5. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. That's right. That's this fountain of goodness within us, of the power and presence of God. It's not just filled up to a certain level. Oh, no. It's overflowing. It is overflowing. You know, it just runs over and over again. This past week, I was watering my garden, and I put out a bucket. I walked away, and a few minutes later, I came. Oh, the bucket was full, and it was running, and there was water everywhere. It was an abundance of blessings. It was abundance of water everywhere. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the picture. Life is filled with this goodness of God, spilling out, ready to be expressed, overflowing, filled in such capacity that it just wants to bubble out from you. And this is the beautiful thing that we have to understand within our lives is that there's so much good already within us. James chapter 1, verse 17, and here's another of many verses describing this very goodness, every good and perfect gift is from above. That above is this higher awareness or consciousness that we're aware of the presence of God versus a lower thinking of just human relationships and the limitations of this world. But every good and perfect gift comes from this wonderful understanding. And it's, it is coming down or bubbling from, shall we say, the Father or this divine source of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows, which means there is a constant consistency here in every good gift coming. A good gift is coming. Another good gift is coming. Another good gift is coming. Another good gift is coming. And if we could just understand the goodness of God within us that wants to bubble out, wants to emerge and bless us. Yet one of our challenges is we don't know how to yield, surrender, allow this divine source to bubble up and flow. 
we've sort of damned up this goodness of God by, first of all, not acknowledging it, not realizing how much good is within us already waiting to emerge. And we sort of damn it up in our doubts and our fears and our stress and our focus being on everything else other than this divine presence waiting to emerge. And so what we've done is we've sort of put a, a cork on it or a lid on it. And let me tell you, what happens when you remove a dam? There is abundance, right? Ever uh, see someone uh, maybe dam up a little stream or a creek, and then when the force of the water pushes against it, it breaks open, there's an, a rapid flow. Oh, you know, I used to uh, live in Holland in the Netherlands. Of course, the Dutch are famous for uh, their dikes, the walls that push back the ocean water so they can reclaim the soil and create farmland. But let me tell you this. There are those who are on dike watch. That's right, making sure those dams, those walls are there and that they are safe to hold back that water because there's been times when that dam or that dike breaks and the whole land is flooded there is, again, this illustration of abundance of what happens within our water, of, uh, with water, of these floods overwhelming everything. Well, you know, let me tell you this. If we could take the lid, if we could open up the cork, if we could break the dam that is holding back the abundance of God's goodness, can you imagine how we might flood our world with the goodness of God, the blessings of God? we might truly touch the world. But we have to start by acknowledging, wait a minute, within me is this goodness waiting to emerge. I am not going to let it wait any longer. Today is my day. I yield, I surrender to it, and I allow it to flow out from me that the world may be touched in such a dynamic way. We sing a song, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. You know, would you imagine if everyone began to say the love of, the, of God, the divine source within me of love is bubbling up, and I'm going to release it. I'm going to let it flow. I'm going to share it. I'm going to give it out because there's an immense fountain of the love of God within me that needs to be expressed and allowed to emerge. Wow. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, would be fulfilled, where we would all be expressing what is divinely found within us. For all the power, the abundance to flow freely, what happens is we must understand that my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. From Philippians chapter 4, 19, that this wonderful need of the world of greater love, whatever the world may need, whatever your community around you may need, can be expressed through you and you and you and me if we just allow it to emerge, if we allow it to be released, we allow the divine flow to happen within us. So let's begin by surrendering to this wonderful presence of God. It's something amazing within. Let's allow it to flow within our lives. And let's be one of those who surrender or yield to the good. Now, how many of you have seen a yield sign? And how many of you have ignored a yield sign? Uh huh. Yeah, we've all seen those signs that say yield. It says pause or to take notice or give way. And so often we run through the yield signs, not only on our streets, not only in traffic, but we run through the yield signs in our spiritual life, calling us to yield. That's right. The Spirit of God is calling us to yield to this divine presence that's already there. Yield. Give way. Give way. Just surrender this divine presence within. So when we surrender, what happens? We are allowing this goodness to unfold within us. And let me tell you this. There is this next stage of unfoldment that's waiting for you. That's right. Because you think it's good right now. Let me tell you this. It gets gooder. That's right. If we can say that, it gets better. That's right. There's even more. Because we may think it's good right now. But let me tell you this. When you surrender to this, when you allow the fountain of goodness to flow, it gets better and better and better and better because that's the ever-expanding power of God. Unfolding good. The unfoldment of good when we simply yield and surrender and say, loving God, flow through me. Flow through me right now. 
Just let this wonderful divine presence emerge. Let it be radiating from my life. Let it touch the world around me because what I want to do is simply yield and surrender to it. For the will of God is for this greater expression of life. When you surrender, you say, there's more of me that I don't even know about. There's more to come about. When you are surrendering to it, we say, you know what? I thought I was good as a light and a beacon of the love of God yesterday. I'm even better today. That's right, because there's more. There's something more yet to come out from our lives. There's so much more that wants to flow through you, so we've got to begin to visualize it and begin to see it there. How many of you have seen the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone? Maybe you've not been there personally, but you may have seen it on television or in a history book or seen somewhere in a uh, natural, N- National Geographic. This wonderful geyser, you know what happens? There's so much pressure building up within it. And it seems like almost every, to, the, to the minute, almost every hour in the hour, there's this explosion and eruption of this power of this force of all that steam and water held within the springs, and it bursts forth into a geyser shooting up, soaring up into the sky. And it, this eruption is so powerful. Well, could you visualize that? An eruption of the power and presence of God in your life that has been waiting, 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 building up within you and so ready to be released within our lot. So to release the, this wonderful power and presence, we've got to release some of these barriers that hold us back. Some of these barriers may be our false beliefs that, hey, there's nothing good in me. Let's eradicate that one real quickly. Scripture already tells us, you are amazing. You are filled with the goodness of God. Let's remove barriers by, first and foremost, setting some intentions within our lives. Joshua, chapter 24 of the Old Testament, gives us a beautiful story. Joshua is speaking to the children of Israel at this key moment and inviting them to make a choice in their spiritual lives. And he is inviting them to throw away the gods of their ancestors, those that they worshipped in the past, and to serve the Lord, to remove these old beliefs, in other words, what he's saying, and to welcome a new thought, to welcome a new way of expressing and living. And he says this, but if the serving the Lord doesn't seem desirable to you, well, then choose for yourself whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors or the gods of the Amorites and those who uh, land you are living, but for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. A bit of a classic phrase we hear. What is that? He has set the intention. He said, you know what? The choice is up to you. You have free will. You can choose what you want. If you're not finding serving God to be desirable, well, then serve whatever you want. Just know that there's consequences. Know that you may miss out on the power and presence of the divine. You may not be fully aware of all the good that this fountain is bubbling up within you. You may be living in the blindness of just following through of an ignorance of the state of feeling that you are not a blessed of God or you're not divine by nature. And you may embrace this teaching that you're sinful and evil. Okay. But for me and my house, we have chosen... We have set the intention that we are going to serve the Lord. He's setting the course for his spiritual direction. He's setting his sails. That's right. You ever been on a ship or a yacht where the sails have not been set in the right direction and the wind just keeps it and carries that boat? Years ago, I had the opportunity to go on a sailing yacht in the island of Antigua. And it had a crew of five. It was a huge sailing yacht. And I was privileged to be part, invited as a guest to be part of this sailing excursion. And, oh, what fun it was. But every morning, the captain ordered the ship's crew to set the sails in the direction they wanted to go, full well knowing that if they didn't set their sails, well, the yacht could just drift and blow wherever. But there was an intention set. We're going to sail around the island I just let the wind blow us throughout the Caribbean wherever. But we have an intention and a direction. Let me tell you this. If you're not setting this intention to release, to surrender, 
to yield to the goodness of God? Your life may be like that ship that's just tossed to and fro. And you may miss out on sailing to the, your true destination where you would like to be, where you'd love to uh, experience the divine abundance of God and the great success for our lives. Let me tell you what happens when you set your intention. It protects your consciousness. It protects your thinking. It protects the directions your thoughts may go. Because let me tell you, in our world today, there's all kinds of things chattering at us. There's all kinds of chatter on the news and the media and conversations and people take, where conversation can take our thoughts into all kinds of crazy destinations, right? We can start thinking fear, stress, worry, panic, because negativity, doubt, all this kind of stuff, it's out there. And if you want to welcome those kind of thoughts into your life, you know what? You'll be this ship that's tossed to and fro. But when you set your intention, what you're doing is protecting your consciousness. You're saying, today, I yield to the presence of God. Today, I surrender. And my intention is to release, to allow the fountain of goodness to emerge from within me. And you know what happens? It's starting to protect your thoughts because you have a focus already there. You have something that's already uh, aligning your thoughts in one direction. You have something that's giving a focus to your life. Years ago, when my son was born, we went to a Lamaze class, my ex-wife and I, and we uh, learned all about the birthing process. And one of the things that they invite us to do is make sure you have a focal point, bring it with you when you come to the birthing room. A focal point. Oh, well, we had selected this sweet little teddy bear that was going to be his gift when he was born. It would be in his nursery. So we brought this teddy bear and set it up on the shelf. And during the birthing process, the invitation was focus, focus, focus. Because your mind may be caught up in all the pain of labor, the pain of what's going on, the stress, the worry. Is this birthing process going right? Is everything going to be okay? Is my child going to be all right? But just focus. Let that focal point constantly remind you of where you're headed and the wonderful birth experience that's going to happen the beautiful child that's coming into your life. Well, this is exactly what an intention does. It's a focal point for us, for our thoughts. It protects our consciousness. So when we set the intention to say, today the goodness of God is bubbling up and flowing through me, we protect our thoughts from going off in different stray places. Well, let me tell you this. That intention can be the base for your success because it's not a vague idea. It's something concrete. That's right. The goodness of God is flowing in me. Pretty concrete. Pretty clear. You know, it's not vague. It's not saying, mm, sometimes, oh, maybe kind of, not so sure. No, when you proclaim that and set that intention that that's what your day is going to be all about, I'm releasing God's goodness. I'm letting it flow through me. It's coming out from me. What happens is then there is something different that happens. There's a difference between a goal and a wish. Let me tell you this. Because it's the amount of energy that you put into it. The amount of desire you put into it. Is the intention a, eh, I wish? Or is it, ah, this is my focus. This is my goal. This is where I'm headed. There's a big difference in that energy, right? Let me tell you this. Your intention needs to be very clear. If you can't define it, no one else can define it. So you've got to be very clear with setting that intention in your life that you're saying, I am passionate about this. I am passionate about releasing the divine within me that the world may experience. I'm passionate about expressing God. I want the world to experience God in me, through me, around me, and for me. This is what the passion is needed because an intention is a goal that is mixed with passion, with a powerful desire. That's the difference. I think a lot of people think an intention is a wish. You know, I wish I'd go to Paris. Okay, that's a nice wish. Are you going? No, I'm just wishing. You see, big difference. But if I have the goal I'm going to Paris, ah, then there's an intention I'm going to Paris. Then there's a passion and a powerful desire behind it. And you know what? I'm going to Paris. That's a big difference, isn't it? And so it is within our spiritual life when we begin to set an intention 
that moves beyond just a wish becomes a goal. It's coupled with passion, and it's coupled with a powerful desire. What happens is then when you set this kind of intention in your life, you're sending a signal to the universe. That's right. Signal, signal to that which is all of God. God, this is what I desire. And what does the Scripture say? God is ready to meet the desires of your heart, to give you exceedingly abundantly about what you could ask or what you could think. That's how God wants it. So when we set this intention with such power and passion, when we release this in our, our, our spirit, we're sending this wonderful message out to the divine, to God, to this wonderful universe, this is what I want. And when you have an intention, let me tell you this, you're more likely to achieve what you want. Because you're actively expressing, actively searching for ways for your intention to be true. Because you're going to live out that. Can you imagine your life if you never had any intentions? Never had any intentions at all. Mm -hmm. What would your life be like? Can you imagine what it's like? I don't know. I'm going to bed. I don't know if I have an intention to wake up or not. You know? I'm going to go to bed. I don't know if I got an intention to ever get out of bed. You know? Ah, uh, going to work. I don't know if I got intention to go to work. You know, I don't know if I'll show up or not. You know, some of you, I don't know if you have the intention to go to church. <laughs> uh, but, you know, without an intention, where are you? Nowhere, right? So what happens is you're at the mercy of circumstances. Your response was mostly going to be then that you become a victim. Oh, we hate to be victims. The circumstances around us, we like to be the master, don't we? We like to be the one in control and sets the direction, and you can. And that's the power of setting this intention within your heart and your life. Because let me tell you this, it only takes one moment to make that decision. I am powerful. I am blessed. I am amazing. The divine within me is flowing out through me, and I am expressing it. When we set that intention, it only takes one moment to make that decision. And that intention can make an incredible shift in the direction of your life. So the key is set your intention. Set it. Set it. Set it is like to set it in cement, you know? Lock it in, you know? Lock that intention within your spirit and your life, and you're going to find amazing things unfolding for you. So today, I invite you to begin to visualize a fountain of good bubbling up within you. That's right, because that's who you are. You're the fountain of God. The ever goodness bubbling up, ready and waiting to emerge from your life. Set that intention then to remove, release, to allow, to yield to, and to surrender to this divine. And to set the intention to allow this higher good to be expressed each and every day in your life. Set this intention to allow the fountain to merge, emerge from within. Allow the goodness of God to be experienced to the fullest. Amen.